we have here a force sensor set up. Force sensor is right there. I have a racquetball. The mass of the racquetball is, and I need you to write it down, please. I'll write it down in a minute, but if you can write it down, 40.5 grams, 40 and a half grams, mass of the tennis ball. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tennis ball and I'm going to release it from approximately 15 centimeters above the force sensor. And we're going to measure the force as a function of time as the tennis ball, I'm sorry, the racquetball runs into the force sensor. I've set up the force sensor to be collecting data at 1,000 hertz, which means it's collecting data 1,000 times per second. Here we go. This demo does not last very long, but the knowledge from it lasts forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm zero. Then I'm going to take the racquetball, hold it approximately 15 centimeters above, and release. There's our fence. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that is our demo. The exciting part is what we can do with it. Now, what we have here, as you recall, is the force as a function of time. So let me zoom in on this small piece so that we can take a look at what we actually have here. So these are our data points. see we have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. I will highlight them. There, those are our data points. There's so. Yeah. Well, actually, this one right here. No. Uh, this one. Again, this one, I'm not so sure about. I guess we could. We'll include that. Sure. Seven. <laughs> okay. So here we have our data points. Now, please pay attention. This is the easiest way to get data from Data Studio into Excel, and you're going to have to do this in your next lab. I'm going to press, press Control C, and then I'm going to press Control V. <laughs> and I have just copied that data. Now, <laughs> you actually never needed it before. This is, uh, believe, believe it or not, this is the easiest way to do it. And uh, up until this point, it's actually easier just to copy it by hand. But anyway, so this equals this one plus. Um, one thousandth of a second. If you recall, this was this was moving at one thousandths. Uh, we were taking data at one thousandths of a second here. So we're going to take a graph of the x y scatter, and we're going to do uh, the we're going to on the x axis we had time in seconds. On the y axis we had force in newtons. Uh, let's see. We don't need a legend, and we will put this as a new sheet. This is force versus time. So this is our graph. And we can add a trend loss. Okay. <laughs> you can the equation on the chart. Now, please watch here as well. I'm going to format the data label. I'm going to change the font so that you can see it so it's a little bit larger. And I'm going to change it so that we have scientific notation with three decimal places so that we can read this and we have the appropriate number of sig figs. Now, this is the equation of the line. If you recall, I said that when you have force as a function of time, you end up with something that looks like this. There it is. So, we are going to analyze this. We have, first off, you know this isn't y and x, it's rather, than, rather force and time. So we know force equals negative 3.034 times 10 to the 6th times squared plus 1.887 times 10 to the 4th times time plus 0 0.7165. And that is in newtons. Now we're going to do a whole bunch with this. And in order to do so, what we're actually going to do is we're going to adjust where the zero is, so that we can have this go directly through zero. It's actually pretty darn close right now, but what we want to do is be able to get rid of this. All, all it does is make our life a little bit easier um, with all of our calculations, and trust me, that is a good idea. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solve for time. So time is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b, uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So, 
<laughs> what is B, Nick? Uh, it's 1.887 times 10 to the Plus or minus the square root of, we have 1.887 times 10 to the fourth squared minus 4 times A, Nick? Times uh, C. C is seven point one six five times ten to the negative first. Right, so zero point seven one six five. All when then we take the square root of two times a, which was negative three point zero three four times ten to the sixth. I need to know what t is equal to plus and minus, please. A lot of calculator help today. You're gonna not want to use that one. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> Are the values supposed to be ridiculously big? Uh, it shouldn't be ridiculously big, no. <laughs> You've got numbers for me. Right, so give it to me without, without scientific notation. Negative 0. Point negative 0.0000374? 2774.3774. 3774.0006257. 006257. 006 these are both in seconds. And notice what these are is they're the intercepts. You, you understand that. It's, if we extended this curve, it would intercept right here, and it would intercept right here. We can see both those numbers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this, this time so that it intercepts with the, um, at the 0, 0. So I'm going to insert right here an adjustment to the time. So the first time is equal to this number plus our 0 0.12343774. And what we're going to do now, this is the adjusted time in seconds. So what we have now is when I graph these with our xy scatter, we have adjusted time on our x-axis and the force in newtons on the y-axis. This we're going to do a new sheet. This is force versus adjusted time. And what we can do now is when we add our trend line, we could do we could set the intercept equal to zero, and you could see that this line it's just a little bit easier to work with. So we now have our force as a function of time. It is equal to negative 3.034 times 10 to the 6th times squared plus 1.910 uh, times 10 to the 4th times 